What is up guys and welcome back to another Bojo New Vlog. How y'all doing? Um, I'm doing alright. Uh, I hope it's bright enough today. Uh, for a change, I'm not recording in like the pitch blackness, blackness of the night. <laughs> uh, it's a good change, but anyway. So, today, I wanted to talk about uh, something I've talked about already, right? And that is, uh, I talked about a concept that I came up with called the axes of value, right? So not to beat a dead horse, right? But I, what I first came up with a concept called the axes of perception, uh, which is content versus context. And then recently I had a, um, I came up with a kind of extended um, idea concept called the axis of value. And that's basically logic versus emotion, which is something I talk about a lot on this channel or have done in the past. And basically in this entry, I wanted to kind of extend this further out into the practical application side of things, right? Um, and specifically, I want to kind of talk about um, the role of um, the role of productivity in your life, right? Which is something that everyone can agree is something that is, you know, prerequisite is a prerequisite for your success in life, right? Fulfillment. Um, but also happiness, right? Um, which is the other dimension. And surprisingly, right, you know, I, I don't know if it's really talked about enough. And like, I don't know, you know, it's, it's not something that people are, you know, questioning very deeply, right? You know, and even if they do, it, it's not something that they usually kind of, like, kind of dump so much effort into thinking about because really it's like, well, you know, there are, let's say there are more pressing matters, you know, at hand, but, so, yeah, these things aren't necessarily connected, right, and, uh, I actually, I actually touched upon this in my latest Lego Mubo session, right, um, you know, talking about my kind of weird, trippy kind of experience of having to be proactive about relaxation, right, me, you know, being like a you know, traditional type B kind of per a personality who like really, you know, had no problems relaxing or like being happy, let's, let's say, right, in my, in my younger days, right, for me to, to kind of at this stage in my life as an adult, right, as, as a kind of developing adult, to, to have to, the, even the idea of like having to be proactive about relaxation is like crazy, right, but that's what happens when you start to kind of you know, when you start to kind of consider like putting your life in order, which which involves you know being more conscious about how you spend your time, basically, right? you know, and all of us on a journey, um, you know, regardless of what you're actually doing, right, um, you know, have to at some point, you know, if 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 our kind of natural kind of inclinations are not to be really product pr productive and sense and responsible let's say and sensible you know we have to learn to be responsible and productive and to use our time wisely and you know etc cetera, etc cetera, right or at least attempt to right you know to build discipline and all this stuff right but but that's that's the thing is that, like that's one half of the equation right and like Really, this entry is like kind of me just discussing my own, like kind of going deeper into my own experiences regarding this, right? Because, you know, I don't know, I don't know if you have this problem, but like I certainly do. And, you know, if you happen to, right, and it's a very kind of pervasive problem, right? And when I say problem, I mean like how do you balance being productive and being happy, right? And like, you know, and it's an art form, right? You know, really, like anything in life, right? Anything that you choose to kind of be 
real with yourself about you always find that it's a that it's a it's an art form right for example i did an entry about the uh like the antidote to ideological possession right and in that entry like most entries you know where i talk about like a contentious topic like it's something that is not simply this is the right answer this is not the right the right answer it's like this is the right answer some of the time and then this other thing is the answer other times right so you know and and usually like there are proponents of both sides right you know which is why ideological warfare exists you know on the internet and in the world you know but the, the truth is you know when you go to the very core of things you know when you go to just like being a human being and being in the world right then like it's that like sometimes certain perspectives are true but then other times other perspectives are true and like i mentioned my king in the subject uh, analogy which is like you know you may have grown up your life thinking that you're like this like you know like subservient not very dominant you know not very high on the social hierarchy type of a person right you know like amongst all of your friends maybe you weren't very confident you weren't very outspoken and like you just felt like you were just you were just one of the the friends you know kind of a thing but then you might grow up and you might find yourself in situations where the role is reversed <clears throat> and you actually like come across someone who embodies what you once embodied and like but you're you're kind of perception of yourself hasn't you know been updated let's say right and it just comes as, as a surprise and it's really eye-opening right and in that same way like when it comes to like kind of balancing things like productivity and happiness it, it's an art form right it's like because again i can give you reasons as to why you should be productive right and if anything i feel that that side of things particularly in the self-help kind of sphere is probably like you know, represented enough, right? <laughs> you know, it, like, you know, everyone can agree that, like, productivity, like, discipline and persistence and, in like, working smart, conscientiousness, like, those things, you know, are basically prerequisites for success, right? You know, and happiness. But, like, again, you know, this is kind of also related to... So, okay, so... The reason I tied the axes of value into this is because, like, well, to be honest, right, you know, you can kind of make the, uh, you can connect basically each thing to each thing, if that makes sense, right? So basically, you know, productivity is like kind of a masculine type of thing, right? You know, it's like getting things done and like being accountable and taking action, you know, and being objective, right? You know, so this is all kind of like within the realm of like you know the the logical axis of value right you know it, it, like you need to be very analytical you need to be very objective you know and you need to be disciplined right because like you have to kind of the whole point is that you you kind of set up a logical structure which is called a plan right or a, and then that trickles down to a schedule right and you have to follow that right and, and hold yourself accountable in some way um, and that kind of requires you to be objective and to kind of distance yourself a bit from the subjective experience of things, which is the emotional side of things, right? However, like, the thing, the, the thing is that, like, you know, I'll just come out and say it, like, the, like, the emotional side of things is really where, like, your experience is, Right? You can think of it in terms of like productivity as a vehicle, right? Like kind of like a car, right? You want your car to perform well. You want your car to be reliable. You want your car to be constantly upgraded so that it's competitive. Like in, in the sense that like, you know, it, it, ho it holds up to the, sta the, the road standards of today, right? You know, it's, it's energy efficient, right? So it burns fuel efficiently. There's minimal pollution um, coming out of it, you know. Like, you want your vehicle to be effective, right? And that's really what productivity is all, is all about, right? You, you like, you know, your work ethic, 
you know your the way like your your goal setting and your problem solving abilities and your bit your ability to kind of hold yourself accountable and to record your progress and all of this stuff right though that's all part of the vehicle of productivity right of, of really your your mind your mental strategy to get ahead in life right however like that's just a vehicle right you know and like often people say you know your body is your vehicle but like really your body is you right you can think of the body in terms of a vehicle right really like you know vehicle corresponds to logical thinking right the logical axis of valuing things so like how does this thing operate mechanically and what does it need to become better and and to to be to to, to be maintained and all of this stuff right that's a very mechanical logical way of thinking about things right but like when it comes to things like fulfillment and happiness right that is you right you are that right and all of the feelings that you have good or bad right because both of those exist right is you right and amongst all of that stuff fulfillment and happiness is part of it right so what i'm trying to say is that like First and foremost, like those two things are kind of different, right? Because they are they lie in different axes of, va of valuing things, right? You know, do you value effectiveness, or do you va do you value like fulfillment, like emotional fulfillment, happiness, right? And really, the, the the most realistic and helpful answer I can give you is you need to focus on both, which is why I say it's art. It's an art form, right? It's an art form because you need to know when to use one thing because it's needed, right? AKA, you need, to, you need to make up money and save up. You need to save more money because you want to buy something or like, you know, you need to kind of like up your game in some way, you know, you, you're setting a goal, right? And so that, during those times, you need to be objective and like you need to think, right? And you need to come up with concrete solutions to things, right? But, like, there are other times when, like, you kind of have to stop and s smell the roses, right? You know, because that is how you... That is how you... Heal. That is how you appreciate everything in your life. That is how you stay sane, right? You know, because at the end of the day, like, you know, yeah, like... S goals, yeah, you know, productivity, yeah, you know, like... Uh, effectiveness and like knowledge and all of these things like you know that the world you know and you and you you, you yourself mentally like think like okay I need to get all of this stuff right but like at the end of the day you're still stuck with you like is one way of looking at it right you know it's like at the end of the day you're, you're just like you're just this life form on this place on this planet right and like you're gonna have uh, you you have like a set number of days, right? You know, or, and like I don't mean set as in like set in stone, but I mean like you know like you have a limited time on this planet, right? And whatever you accomplish, like you know you're gonna have to live with it, and like it's not gonna absolve you <coughs> from like the up, the ups and downs of life, of physical existence, right? Which is you know that's. You know, it's my, my very kind of dramatic way of saying basically, like, sometimes you just need to slow down, right? You, you need to, like, feel. You know, you need to, like, you need to take the space to kind of, like, slow down and check in with yourself and see, like, how you feel, you know, against or, or relative to, like, the people in your life, relative to, like, what you're doing, Right? Yes, you're being a, you may be being you may be being effective, but like, is it effective in a way that that like makes you feel good about yourself, right? And if it doesn't, then like that's something that you need to think about, right? You know. But really, really, it's like, I don't know. Like, you know, I feel that like, yeah. Even just me explaining that just now is like kind of putting emotion into the the compartment of like, you know, you need to rest so that you can become more effective is one way of looking at it, right? And like, maybe that resonates with people who are more masculine, right? AKA like they're more productivity focused. 
They're more about they, they they're more about effectiveness, right? But I myself, right? I think of it the other way around, right? So it really depends what kind of person you are. Like, if you're watching this, then you're probably like me, honestly, right? You know, uh, so like you're you're more sensitive, right? You're more kind of like artistic and creative, and like, if anything, I had to rationalize to myself why I should work, right? And the way that I rationalized it in the beginning was like, hey, if you work, then you'll get to experience more happiness, and that's how I roped myself into it, right? Because it's like the message of like you know, hey, like, work harder, because that's just what you are, but then, but then, like, you might want to rest from time to time, so that you don't burn out, that, like, that was never attractive to me, because it's like, I'm not naturally someone who works hard, right, you know, just being honest, so I had to kind of, like, flip that shit on its head, and be like, okay, for me, it's about, like, okay, like, I feel miserable when I don't do things, right, so, like, in order to well, I, I, I later realized that it's it's also, like, you can't er eradicate misery, right? Because it's tempting at the beginning to be like, yeah, and like, to be happy, then you have to, like, um, then you have to be productive. And it's like, no, it will make you happier. It definitely will make you happier, right? Because, like, it's just you're sorting your life out. And it, it's undeniable, right? You know, if your life is a mess, you know, people can make the argument, right? You know, like... <laughs> like hippies, <laughs> like crystal toting hippies. <laughs> I'm only kidding, by the way, but like crystal toting hippies, right? They might make the argument that, like, you know, you don't need any material possessions to be happy. If anything, that stuff is just, you know, it's just a distraction, right, from your true happiness of being, right? And it's like, fair enough, you know, like. That might work for someone, right? I've even entertained that, you know, in the past. Like, maybe I should just fucking give everything up. The system's corrupt. Maybe I should just go fucking live in a cave or something, right? Or, like, in some remote part of the world and, like, rough it myself. And be apart from this fucking machine. But it's like... Okay, but, like, if you're going to make the decision, the decision to be in that machine, right? Ultimately. If, you, if, like, ultimately you start to decide, actually, you know what? Living in a cave or in a forest does not sound appealing to me. Right, I want my Starbucks. I want my Sainsbury's or like Kate or like a uh, Walmart or where the fuck you shop. Right, then like you have to kind of um, you you have to like um, yeah, you have to get your life in order. Right, and when you start to get your life in order, then like you start feeling that pressure come off of you. Right. Um, but, but and, and so, like, yeah, you know, it does make you happier, but, like, also, you're still going to be miserable. Like, you know, regardless of what you do, right, life is misery half of the time, right? It is, you know? I wish I could sugarcoat that, but, like, you know, you know, I know and you know that I would just be bullshitting, right? It's like, life is miserable sometimes, but, like... Productivity allows you to, to not only become happier, like, by, by kind of, like, cultivating a sense of personal responsibility that, like, I can take control of my life. I'm not just this helpless victim, right? But also, it puts into context your misery, right? You know, Jordan Peterson has a very eloquent way of putting it. He says, like, you want to design your life and live out your life in such a way that the pain of your life is justified by your means of, of living, if that makes sense. So basically, like, you want to pick a life design that is going to, like, make your misery tolerable because you understand, like, why you're going through that pain, right? And, like, yeah, and that's really profound because, like, Life is misery, like whether or not you do anything. Like, you know, the, the pessimist, the pessimistic way of looking at, the, at that is you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't, right? You're fucked either way, right? And like, you know, that's the pessimistic nihilist existential way of looking at things. But like, but then when you flip back to like the, you know, the more optimistic side of things, it's like, well, okay, life is going to be shitty and like either way. So like, why don't I actually try and do something with my life? Because I know that life is not just misery, right? It's not. Life is misery, but it's not all misery, right? And, like, that's 
the, the thing that you need to get out of that jaded thing, right? You know, we all start off in the naive, like overly optimistic thing of like, everything's going to be fine. But then like, we get fucking hurt by life and miserable and in despair and in depression, all of this dark shit. And to, in order for you to not be bitter chronically, right? You know, to not be like permanently bitter. Like you also have to realize that misery is not all of life. Life is misery, but life is also like joy and, and love and, and tenderness. Right? You know, it really is. Like if you keep your eyes open, which is another way of saying be present with life, with yourself, with feelings, right? To the moment, right? Present to the moment. Mm -hmm. It means like realizing that, um, you know, it's, it's all good, right? It's all good. But anyway, so... I don't want to make this entry long, actually, because uh, I'm actually on a tight schedule today. But yeah, but like, okay, so I'll, I'll kind of just describe um, briefly. Uh, just give me a second. I'm going to describe briefly what um, what yeah, like what this looks like practically. Because you know, I've just been going over the theory basically. But like, basically. Um, Basically, so I'm just making more space on my phone, but like, yeah, so there are times when you need to knuckle down and get things done, you know, there are times when you need to do that. Um, and you, and like, if you're not used to doing that, then it can be very difficult. But like, what you do is that like, you kind of, um, you practice, right? You practice. And also another thing that's helpful is like to kind of throw yourself into things sometimes, right? You know, like, which is another way of saying like, you know, let life hurt you from time to time, right? And I know that's kind of not like, like not very kind of like, you know, like uh, virtuous kind of sounding advice, right? But like, when you feel pain and you feel that sense of urgency that comes from like being in pain and feeling helpless, then like that gives you some degree of energy to actually motivate yourself, right? It's like sometimes like a lack of motivation just means that like you're you're kind of in you're kind of in like this weird bubble, right? And it's like the fucked up thing is that like we tend to want to stay in bubbles, right? You know, there's a reason why bubbles exist. Right, a bubble being like a place where you just feel comfortable and nothing's really happening, but you're not also making progress and you're just kind of in this weird limbo inertia type of a situation, right? And then it takes something that pops that bubble, right? You know, you run out of money or like you realize that you're getting to a certain age and all of these like rude awakenings, right? Crises basically, right? You know, that pops those bubbles. Like it's terrible when it happens, but then like eventually you pick you you pick up you, you pick up your pieces and you put you put yourself back together and you realize that like okay like that actually gave me some motivation to move forwards right but really it, it's just practice and like yeah and, and like kind of like contending with like the the kind of shit that happens to, with to you right but anyway uh, so that's that um, and then like. Really, the, the, the thing, I wouldn't say it's harder, right? You know, this is, of course, coming from someone who's, like, naturally a type B personality. I wouldn't say it's harder, but I would say that it's less taught. It's, it's less kind of sellable, I guess, right? It's a less sellable idea, but, like, well, in some ways, you know, people do say it, right? They're, like, you know, it's, like, be happy and, like, follow your love and stuff like that, right? But, like... How do you do this practically, right? And how you do it practically is you consult your feelings, right? You know, I, 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 that, that's the title of a video that I did ages ago, like a few years ago, consult your feelings. And like, basically like, you can't think yourself, you know, into like what you, what you, what you need to, to heal yourself, right? Cause that's what happiness means really. It means to heal yourself, right? Because if, like, it's funny, like, Jordan Peterson, like, one of his statements is that, one of his views is that, like, happiness, the pursuit of happiness is a waste of time, right? Well, 
and I, I'm paraphrasing, so I'm not, I hope I'm not, you know, misconstruing his words, but like, um, but I feel that like, to be more specific, right? It's not that the pursuit of happiness is futile. If anything, the pursuit of happiness is it's crucially important, right? You know, to to you know to to not become like a miserable fuck, right? You know, and and to retain the love you have for life, right? But like, um, I but I would say that like where people go wrong is that like they get attached to the idea of like happiness as a destination. Right. Happiness is not a destination. Right. Happiness can be an aim, but like the thing about thinking about happiness as a destination is that like it kind of gets you into this mentality where you want to be happy always, right? And then whenever you lose happiness, it crushes you, right? Like you come to the understanding that like life is ups and downs, right? But despite of that, happiness itself is not a futile pursuit, right? The pursuit not the state of happiness is a worthwhile pursuit, right? And and so like, yeah, like, what I would say is that, you know, do what you need to do, right? Do what you need to do. But then when it when it comes time for you to take a break, and you'll know, either like, you have to deal with other things in your life, and so you have to wind down from your productive tasks. Or you just burn out, right? Let's be honest. No, you just you just kind of lose your groove and like you just you, just, you get burnt out and you're tired and like you're, you're kind of miserable, right? You know, you know, right? Sometimes it means you got to push through that shit, right? Be a hustler, right? But like sometimes it means that it would be great if you could take a few days, even one day, to just purge everything. And I, I really mean purge everything. It's like, you know, and this takes practice because like, you know, the fear is that if you purge everything, you'll, you'll lose your momentum. And it's like, to some degree, that's actually true, right? There is always a danger that like, if you, if you put everything down, then like, then you'll lose your momentum and, you, and then you'll be fucked, right? And it's like, yes, I understand that. But like, um, well... If, if, if it's scary for you, then, like, what you can do is you can, you can place limits on it, right? So, like, you can kind of, like, be like, okay, this is, this is probably the better way of doing it, right? It's like, every day, right, you have your tasks that you need to do, right? You, you, you write those down and you keep on top of them. But then, like, at the end of the day, like, you can also schedule in a reward for yourself, like, since you've done those tasks, right? Um, you know. And, yeah, this takes practice, right, because the thing is that, like, yeah, you know, some certain things do have kind of a negative impact on you, like junk food, for example, or, like, too much mindless entertainment, you know. So, like, you know, you want to keep those in check, but but still, like, you never want to put things out of bounds, right, you know. So, so again, it's like, I can't give you a definitive way of doing it, right. What I will say is, as frustrating as it is, you do occasionally need to, like, indulge, right? So this is another thing I talked about in my Lego Mobo session, right? It's like, particularly if you're an artist, right? You know, particularly artists. Like, you need to sometimes indulge, right? And as you, as you get older, you know, you know to indulge in more healthy ways. But, like, but, some, but even then, right, sometimes you, 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 you crave something that's not very good for you. And, like... As long as you you're you're on track and you and you're mindful of what you're doing, right, and you have a focus, then like occasionally it's okay to succumb, right? It really is, right? Because like it's trust me, it, it's it's hard to explain why, but like if you've ever done this, right, and you've ever been conscious about it, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's like it when you're in that productive mode, like you're like fucking no. Right? I'm not gonna fucking fuck myself over. I work so hard to get to where I am now. Like, I had to build the discipline. And, like, I'm not naturally a very disciplined person. So, like, the minute that I fucking, like, lose, you know, lose, drop the ball on that shit, then, like, I'm gonna go back to being, like, a lazy asshole, right? But it's like, you know, and it's gonna be really, and then I'm gonna have to build that discipline up again. It's like, yeah, I understand, right? But, like, you, but, like, the point is that you, you're trying to find, like, a, a rhythm, 
this is what people mean by by rhythm, by finding a real rhythm. It's like you find a lifestyle uh, whereby, like you know, you um, you get into a rhythm where, like, you have the right amount of productivity and the right amount of relaxation, right? And that's obviously like a variable target. But like you learn to kind of feel that out, and that's the art form of balancing the two things of productivity and happiness. Right. You know. They're both important. Right. They are both important, but like the specifics of how much you suspend in each mode will vary. Right. And that's something that, that you need to be open about. Right. And it really it's really down to your personality and your temperament. Like maybe if you're more orderly, then like you don't need too much leeway. You can just set like a very rigid schedule. And as long as you have both things in, you're fine, right? But, like, if you're like me and you're more kind of, like, you're more kind of, like, scatterbrained and, like, and whimsical, right? Then, like, you might you might want to be less rigid with your uh, agenda making, let's just say, right? But, like, I hope that that is helpful for you. It's, like, it's, it's just, like, yeah. So, basically, you know, I think this applies to everyone, which is why I'm talking about it, is, like... You, you you need you have two areas areas in your life. You have one area where like you need to work. Basically, there's the work side of you, and then you can say that there's the fun side of you, right? And the fun side of you is not just about fun, but it's about like it's about being sensitive, really, to to like what you want. And sometimes that shit can be like junk food, or it can be like mindless entertainment, or it could be masturbation, right? You know, it it could be something like really like just infantile or like perverted you know or like uh you know just like uh trivial like trivial you know and you're just like why am i wasting my time but it's like sometimes you need to like it in the same way that you need to integrate the side of you that is like dark i guess you also need to integrate the side of you that's light and like there are times when the darkness is actually more more light than you think Right, and that's the whole like kind of shadow work process. But like, you also need to kind of like, you also need to retrieve the the the. If, I hope I'm making sense here, but like, you need to kind of like look at the things that you condemn. There, there are things that you that you avoid, and that's your shadows and stuff, right? But there's also things that you like that you consciously judge as being like bad or like unproductive, and like that's I guess another form of shadow. But like that, but like being able to like not be so like uh, particular about what constitutes like healing for you. That's the art form. That's the that's the challenge, right? That's part of the art form. It's like, yeah, believe you me, like you know, it's like uh, like it's like the, the judgment is so strong because you're like you know. YouTube videos are bad, right? They're mindless entertainment and, and McDonald's and KFC and all of this stuff is junk food and it's all bad, right? And it's like, yeah, like, you have to kind of start to see their destructive influence on you, right? And like, and, and how they detract from, you know, you fulfilling your potential goals and stuff like that. But like, you also need to see the good that those things pose for you, right? You know, and it's like, you know, we're all vibrationally, like, dynamic beings, is one way of putting it. Like, sometimes when you're in a lower state, maybe what you need is that dirty high, right? And, like, it, it's something that's very difficult to sell in, like, the personal development kind of sphere, because it's, like, that's kind of what people teach people away from. It's, like, you know, don't, like, you know, you like you need to make sure that the shit that y you take into your body is good quality all the fucking time. It's, like, that is that makes complete sense and it and it's really really sensible and like I would endorse that 100 percent but the the thing that I found with myself is that like it's just not practical to like be a hundred percent kosher all the time right you you set an optimum right of like okay um yeah you set an optimum and you endeavor to to kind of like up like to, to keep optimizing for like you know good quality uh not non-dirty like clean forms of nourishments for yourself and also your soul but like occasionally shit happens and like if you if during those times you're like you're stubborn and you're like no 
I am not going to have a dirty hit, right? It's like, I mean, in some ways it's admirable, and like, I don't exactly, like, I wouldn't exactly disagree with like you trying to like resist it right you know because that's in some sense it's it's also a worthwhile kind of thing to try out but like occasionally you you can have those hits right and like it's like a it's kind of like an an evolution of your consciousness because like you're no longer like forcing yourself to not engage and partake in those dirty hits, but like you're 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 organically learning the place that they have, right? So to the point where you you know and you can feel when they're needed and when they're not needed, right? And there's, and like obviously there's always a degree of discipline required, but like, but but you but you know you know like those things enough and like the effect that they have on you that like it doesn't fuck you up basically, right? So anyway. Yeah, a bit of a, an esoteric example, but like, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say, right? So like, yeah, that's the message I wanted to give in this entry. Um, I hope it was helpful. If you have any comments or anything like that in the sec uh, in your brains, then leave them in the, in the comment section below. Uh, yeah, it, the next week, next week's ep episode is a very interesting episode, but like, I'm going to have to condense it, right? Because like, I'm actually on a tight schedule, but like, yeah, I'll, I'll try and, uh, you know, I'll try and uh, pack everything in, but like, so cool. Until next time, guys, thank you very much for watching this, and I will catch you in the next entry. Stay safe, stay you, stay good, and keep following your dreams, motherfucker. Until next time, peace out. Oh.